stoichiometry is the ability to make predictions based on the quantities of reactants or products in a reaction. We use the relationships between the amounts of reactants and the amounts of products in a balanced chemical reaction. So before we do the stoichiometry, we have to make sure that we're able to read a balanced chemical equation. So let's start with the formation of carbon monoxide. First things first, it has to be balanced. If you don't have a balanced equation, you can't do any of the work in this unit. So now we have it balanced. Now what does it say? In the last chapter, when we learned to balance equations, we would say that two atoms of solid carbon combine with one molecule of oxygen gas to produce two molecules of carbon monoxide gas. But now that we know about moles, we can actually read this equation in a different way. If you multiply everything by Avogadro's number, this equation says two moles of solid carbon plus one mole of oxygen gas will create two moles of carbon monoxide gas. All right, let's try again. If we take some silver nitrate and iron, we'll create a single replacement reaction forming iron three nitrate and silver. Again, you have to balance the equation before you do any work in this chapter. We can read this balanced equation by saying three formula units of silver nitrate. Remember for ionic compounds, the smallest particles are called formula units. So again, three formula units of aqueous silver nitrate will combine with one atom of solid iron to form a formula unit of aqueous iron three nitrate and three atoms of solid silver. Or again, we can read this as moles. Three moles of aqueous silver nitrate will combine with one mole of solid iron to make one mole of aqueous iron three nitrate and three moles of solid silver. All right, from the Department of Redundancies Department, let's do this one more time. In this reaction, please, please, please balance it first and we could say that one molecule of nitrogen gas combines with three molecules of hydrogen gas to make two molecules of ammonia gas. Or, one mole of nitrogen gas combines with three moles of hydrogen gas to make two moles of ammonia gas. And one other twist, we won't rely on this in this chapter, but later, we'll see if they're all gases, we can read these in terms of liters. So I could say one liter of nitrogen gas combines with three liters of hydrogen gas to make two liters of ammonia gas. Before we move on, is it okay to use fractions? When I go back to that carbon monoxide reaction, we balanced it by saying two, one, two. Could I have balanced it by saying one, one half, and one? Well, it depends on how you read it. It doesn't make sense to say that one atom of carbon combines with half a molecule of oxygen gas to make one molecule of carbon monoxide gas. But it does make sense if you say one mole of solid carbon combines with half a mole of oxygen gas to make one mole of carbon monoxide gas. When you read your balanced equations in terms of moles, it's okay to have fractions. In fact, you're actually going to see a lot of balanced equations this year with fractions in them. When you see that, though, you know that they're written in terms of moles. So let's do the stoichiometry part. Let's make some predictions. If I have 3.52 moles of calcium oxide and I let it decompose, let's predict how many moles of calcium will be produced. So the first thing you need is a balanced equation. Calcium oxide is CaO, because calcium has a plus two charge and oxygen has a minus two charge as an ion. And it's decomposing, it's not combining with anything. So when calcium oxide breaks apart, it makes calcium and then it also makes oxygen. Don't forget that oxygen is a diatomic molecule, so oxygen would be O2. We're not balanced. I need two oxygens over here, so I'm gonna put two CaOs, which means I need to put a two here. If we read this balanced equation, it tells us that two moles of calcium oxide decompose to form two moles of calcium and one mole of oxygen. The question gives us 3.52 moles of calcium oxide. And it's asking us how much calcium would be produced. Well, we know that two moles of calcium come from two moles of calcium oxide. From our balanced equation, there's a two to two or a one to one ratio. We could actually write this like we were doing a conversion. We could say that there are two calciums for every two calcium oxides. And we can actually cancel out our calcium oxides. And the reason that works is because our data is in moles. And so we can use the ratios from our balanced equations because the ratios are in terms of moles. Two moles of calcium oxide produce two moles of calcium and one mole of oxygen. 
I can just follow through with the math here and say that 3.52 times 2 over 2, well 3.52 times 2 over 2 is just 3.52 times 1, so that means I'm going to get 3.52 moles of calcium. We would predict that 3.52 moles of calcium oxide produces 3.52 moles of calcium. The question doesn't ask it, but we could go on and do the same thing with oxygen. We could say if I have 3.52 moles of calcium oxide, then what's the ratio of my oxygen? I have one mole of oxygen produced for every two moles of calcium oxide. So I could put 1O2 for every two CaO. And again, I can cancel out the CaOs, which is 1.76 moles of oxygen. Now it might seem strange I'm making more moles of products than moles of reactants, but that's okay. There's no such thing as conservation of moles. There's just conservation of mass. And if you looked at your balanced equation, that should make sense. I'm starting with two moles of reactants and ending with three moles of products. So I should have more product than I do reactants.